Hello, it's Fabian with you again for another video tutorial on the two-stroke Chinese 80cc motorized bicycle engine. Today we'll be doing a centrifugal clutch install and I'll be taking you through a few pointers as far as getting it installed correctly and operating properly. First thing you have to do is to make sure the manual clutch is not slipping before you do your centrifugal clutch install. To make sure that the manual clutch is not slipping and especially after you've done around 200 miles or let's say 300 kilometers of distance so you know the manual clutch is bedded in. Once that's happened you wind up the flower nut, this device here, by two index points. So you can see there's the uh, anti-rotation screw. You undo the anti-rotation screw. You then pull the clutch in and you'll be able to rotate this flower nut around by two index positions. You then use a Loctite 222 and you screw that anti-rotation screw back in. The Loctite 222 is low strength Loctite so that you can get that screw back out without damaging the screw if you need to. Once that is completed you then need to remove the helical crankshaft gear, this device here. Now with your two-stroke motorized bicycle engine kit you will have received a or an extraction tool that allows you to remove the helical gear on the right hand side and allows you to remove the tin tooth output shaft sprocket on the left hand side. In the case of removing the helical gear on the right hand side you use the smaller diameter part of the extraction tool. You'll then remove the extraction tool centerpiece. You will then unscrew the screw that normally holds the gear in place and you will take out the anti-rotation washer. You will then screw the tool into the gear. all the way in. You'll then put the center part of the extraction device in place. Screw it in till it bottoms out. Once it's bottomed out you'll then get a spanner and you'll start to wind that in which will start to force the helical gear off the crankshaft and it will come off like so. You can then undo this a little bit. You'll then take out the extraction tool and keep this for a later date if you ever want to revert back to a manual uh, clutch situation. Most important is that you need to remove the woodruff key that normally sits in place that stops that gear from rotating around the crankshaft. So this is the woodruff key and it typically it will typically sit in the receiver slot just there. So this Woodruff key or half moon key normally sits in that receiver slot with a half moon sitting inside the crankshaft. You must remove this before you put on the crankshaft extension sleeve otherwise you will force this Woodruff key into the crankshaft seal. If you force it into the crankshaft seal, you will damage the crankshaft seal. Once that's been removed, you will then need to put the extension housing in place, which is this device. Okay. Now I've put five gaskets on the extension housing and there's a reason for it that I will explain later first part that you need to know is that there is a hole in the five layers of gaskets. Hopefully you can see that. Let me just explain it a little bit better. Okay. So, there is your hole. Right there. What I typically do is I will put some silicon on each of the gaskets. 
I'll then install this in place, let the silicon dry so that the first gasket has attached to the extension housing and then the other three, four gaskets are attached to it so they stay in there in one nice solid piece. In this case there's four on there and there's one loose gasket which will go on. Okay. What we need to do now is just to put one of these gaskets in place. We'll just leave it sitting like so. The next part of the process is the crankshaft extension sleeve, which is this device here. Front face, rear face. It is extremely important that the inside face of the crankshaft extension sleeve where it mates onto the crankshaft is perfectly clean in here. So what I typically do I'll get some terps which is the best thing since sliced bread for degreasing I'll take a cotton tip Degrease it like so. I'll then take alcohol. And I'll clean the terps off with alcohol. Then use air to blow that out. The next part of the process is to do the same thing on the crankshaft. I'll switch to alcohol. And I'll clean off the terps. Now what we can do is we can place our extension sleeve on the crankshaft. You'll find that there's always one spot where it just likes to sit best. Yeah, that looks like a good spot there. Okay, we can now put our extension housing on. I swap out the normal bolts that they use in these two points here to hold the uh, extension housing on and I swap them out with button head cap screws like so they are M6 by 15 millimeters long there. I find it's much easier to use this method to get good purchase on these screws. If you just use the normal Phillips head type screws they tend to strip out. It's just hard to get good purchase. in place. Now what you do is you apply a little bit of lubricant on the 
crankshaft extension housing sleeve. I like to use molybdenum disulfide grease. It works particularly well. It stays on there for a long time. The same thing on the inside of the clutch bell. I like to put a little bit of grease on there and on the sprag bearings or one-way bearing that allows you to pedal start the engine. There should be five bearings in there, five roller bearings on the inside of that housing. If you have four, you've lost one, you've got to find it. It will not work with four. There you go. You can see them in there. Okay. Now the other thing I have to mention is that to enable long life of the centrifugal clutch you will have to allow a method to get lubrication once it's all assembled is to get lubrication onto this extension housing sleeve and into the internal diameter of the gear. If you don't do that there's no way to lubricate the bearing. Um, it will simply end up seizing and the whole thing will just weld itself together. So you have to provide some method of lubrication and to do that you drill a hole into the gear. In this case I've done it there. Drill a 2.5 millimeter hole. I've explained that um, on a motorized bicycle website so if you want to get back to me on that I can forward you the link. You have to drill a hole through the gear. Correspondingly there is a hole in the gasket where a WD-40 style applicator tube can fit through the gasket. It comes through this point here and then it goes into the hole in the gear. And when you squirt lubricant it goes in between the surface of the inner face of the gear and the outer face of the crankshaft extension sleeve and thereby you're able to permanently keep it lubricated and it will give you a long, long life and reliable operation. You then have to put the clutch bell on which can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. There you go. Okay. Once that's done, you have to put the clutch shoes in place. That's the rear face. And that's the front face. I will have to explain that this face here or this extension housing, um, or extension sleeve I should say, has two flat edges. There's also two corresponding flat edges on the clutch shoes, which is there and which is there. Now what I do is I'll take a file and I will get this to focus. Come on, focus. Okay. I will file this area in here absolutely flat where I've got the blue ink. If you don't file that area flat, and I mean gently, 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 you don't want to make that too large. You just want to get it perfectly flat so that it fits onto the um, extension housing sleeve and enables you to easily get on there. Okay, it enables you to easily remove the um, clutch shoes. Like so. If you don't do that, what happens is that the clutch shoes will attach themselves onto the extension sleeve and 
it's very, very difficult to get the clutch shoes off that extension sleeve if for whatever reason you need to wind up the flower nut to get a little bit more preload on the clutch to stop it slipping because you have to remove the clutch shoes, you've got to remove the clutch bell to remove the extension housing. So by doing that I do a few test trials where I place the extension sleeve into the clutch shoe area so that I can get that out of there without any dramas um, because at a later point in time you will find that if you don't do that it is a near impossible job to try to get the clutch shoes off that. Okay. So now we can put this in place. And on it goes. Okay. Next part in the process is to do some test trials of the bolt to make sure that it's not bottoming out in the crankshaft. Because this bolt here, get it to focus, okay. This bolt here can sometimes be slightly too long and it will bottom out in the crankshaft and when that happens you think that it's done up tight but it hasn't applied enough pressure or it doesn't apply any pressure at all to the clutch shoes and the clutch shoes then force themselves onto the extension um, crankshaft extension sleeve which then forces that ex crankshaft extension sleeve onto the crankshaft and gives you your friction fit so you have to do a few trials and the method that I've used is to apply blue texture, blue paint, whatever it might be, or any coloured paint on the end of the threads. So when you screw that in place and you think it's done up solid, if it has bottomed out, you will see that the blue texture or whatever paint you use will have touched on the bottom part of the bolt. If that is the case, you then have to shorten the bolt so to give yourself maybe one millimeter of clearance so when it's done up in position and torqued you know 100 percent for sure that the bolt is actually putting pressure on the clutch shoes and forcing the extension housing hard up on the crankshaft giving you your friction fit so in my situation i've done this before i know this bolt is okay and i will then use a loctite 243 which is medium strength loctite So we've got the Loctite on there, that goes in place. I find things a heck of a lot easier to use a butterfly rattle gun when doing it up. So socket, on it goes, butterfly rattle gun. spinning quite nicely okay so you can see the, the spray clutch working in this direction which is clockwise it's rotating you spin it quickly and now it's locked it's turning the clutch shoes so this would be an example of when you're trying to pedal start it so okay so here you can see spinning now it's locked and it's turning the clutch shoes which is now turning the engine Part of the process is to apply the cover, install the cover. So in this situation, what I have done is to enable indexing. I'll just wait for that to the To enable indexing of the clutch bell, so that the hole, so that the hole. 
that's in the set of paper gaskets can line up with the hole in the crankshaft or in the uh, not my apologies not the crankshaft in the clutch bell gear you need to give some level of indexing so that you can stick a screwdriver or whatever it might be so that you know that this clutch bell is in the correct position so that the two holes of the um, paper gasket and the clutch bell gear line up so that applicator tube will be able to go through the paper gaskets and into the clutch bell gear to do this I have simply taken an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and I don't know if you can see that and just made a very light notch about maybe one millimeter into the clutch bell so what happens is that when you put a screwdriver through the cover the screwdriver locks into place in that notch so when the clutch bell is in that position where the screwdriver locks in you know that both the hole in the gaskets and the hole in the clutch bell gear are lined up and you can simply put that applicator tube through both of them and give a squirt of lubricant in between the crankshaft extension sleeve and the clutch bell gear so you then need to drill a hole in the extension housing cover so in this case forgive me for all of the shaky movement in this case I've drilled a six millimeter hole in the cover this six millimeter hole sits in position like so on the housing and just screw it up. Screw that in place. It's a little bit tricky trying to do this real time. Okay. So now you have the hole there, you simply put a screwdriver through the hole you rotate the wheel of the um, bicycle backwards and as the wheel is rotating backwards the clutch bell is also rotating and you will be able to feel that it gets to a certain position and bang you can almost maybe hear that on the video the screwdriver has now gone into the little indentation in the clutch bell so you now know that the clutch bell and the gear that the um, that's attached to the clutch bell and the hole in the gear and the hole in the paper gaskets is lined up so you will now in that situation be able to get the application tube in through the gasket in through the gear and be able to lubricate the crankshaft extension sleeve now obviously you're going to have a hole there and you have to fill that hole so what I've done is taken a six millimeter blank off plug which looks like so and it's just a blank off plug and that blank off plug simply fits into the hole and covers up that hole so that's pretty much the process of installing a centrifugal clutch on the ADCC two-stroke Chinese motorized bicycle engine I hope that's been of help, even though the video may have been a little bit shaky, um, but it can be tricky trying to do things in real time without cutting the video and editing the video. Hope it's been of help. Thank you.